All right. So you're back with me in nature once again. It's a calm summer night. I hope you guys can hear the crickets. At roughly 20 decibels, they are very quiet. Suddenly, there's been an emergency. An ambulance comes through and its siren is blaring at 120 decibels, which standing right next to it is extremely loud. Lastly, that sound fades away and all you can hear is the sound of my voice, which assuming you're wearing earphones or listening from your laptop is gonna be roughly 60 decibels. And that is roughly the range of human hearing. So we're gonna look at how we perceive loudness, the physical nature of loudness. We're gonna take a look at how it's processed in our brains. And then we're gonna look at noise induced hearing loss. So when loudness starts to damage our ears and our sense of hearing. Loudness is defined as the magnitude of an auditory sensation from very soft to very loud. And it is the perceptual correlate of intensity. Intensity is a function of the amplitude of a wave. The stronger those compressions and rarefactions of air molecules, the stronger the amplitude, the stronger the intensity, and the louder the sound we hear. Loudness is not just a function of intensity, however, it's also a function of some other factors, including spectral bandwidth, duration, individual hearing status, and even your personality traits and your mood. The takeaway here is that loudness is a perception and it's subject to perceptual bias. We hear with our brains and not just our ears. So let's take a look at intensity. Intensity is a function of the amplitude. In fact, it's directly proportional to the square of the amplitude of a sound wave. And the loudness that we perceive isn't directly linearly correlated with the intensity of a sound. This equation that we have here, it shows a decreasing perception of loudness with intensity. So that graph looks something like this. As intensity increases, the loudness doesn't increase proportionally. Music contains dynamics, the loudness and softness of notes or sounds. Musicians can use dynamics to emphasize specific notes or introduce emotional character. Louder sounds can represent energy, activity, or draw attention to a specific note or phrase. Quieter sounds can represent calmness, rest, or lead up to a next louder note. Music that doesn't contain variations in loudness can sound lifeless and flat. We measure loudness with the decibel scale. And the decibel scale ranges from zero to around 150 and it is described by this equation right here. The number of decibels equals 10 times the log of the intensity over this number. That number is the threshold of human hearing. And its function in this equation is to make the decibel scale an absolute scale of human hearing. So um, zero is the limit of human hearing, whereas 140, 150 is the upper limit. And this is a logarithmic scale, meaning that an increase in 10 decibels down in the lower parts of the scale is not equal to an increase in 10 decibels at the higher end of the scale. You can see here on the right that what we consider quiet is anywhere between zero and 40, 50 decibels. A moderate sound is between 50 and 70. A loud sound is between 70 and 80. And then a very loud sound, like a truck, is above 80. Here's some landmarks. So. Trucks, 80 decibels, a helicopter is 100, police sirens around 120, and fireworks, if you were right next to the fireworks, that would be 140 decibels, and that is the threshold of pain. Anything higher than that, you wouldn't even hear, it would just hurt. So, 
how do we process loudness in our ears and in our brains? Well, loudness starts off as the amplitude of a sound wave. The sound reaches the middle ear and strikes the tympanic membrane. Sounds with higher amplitude strike the membrane with more force, causing stronger vibrations in the ossicles, causing stronger vibrations in the fluid of the cochlea. This has two effects. First, the hair cells in the cochlea reach their action potential more often and fire at a quicker rate into the vestibulocochlear nerve. Second, a greater bandwidth of cochlear hair cells are triggered. For example, a quiet sound may trigger this range of hair cells, but a louder sound of the same pitch may trigger this wider range. Both of these processes can individually contribute to the increased perception of loudness. Go ahead and listen to these two notes and ask yourself which one you find louder. Here's the first note. And here's the second. The two notes have the same pitch. The only way they differ is their frequency bandwidth. It turns out that the first note is a solid five to six decibels louder than the second note, but many people will perceive it as quieter. This is because its frequency range is narrower than that of the second note. Loudness is perceived differently at different levels of pitch. The equal loudness curve shows us that a lower frequency sound requires a higher intensity than a higher frequency sound in order to be perceived as the same loudness. The electrical signal travels through the vestibular cochlear nerve and up the brainstem with a corresponding increase in neuronal firing rate for higher intensity sound. fMRI shows increased activation of all the nuclei along the auditory pathway with increased intensity, all the way up to the auditory cortex. It's believed that this signal turns into our familiar perception of loudness in the auditory cortex. The auditory cortex of cats and other animals is amplitopically arranged, meaning that higher intensities are processed on one side of the cortex and lower intensities on the other. fMRI suggests that the human brain may also be amplitopically arranged. In a small 2002 study with nine participants, it was found that quieter sounds at 70 decibels were processed on the dorsolateral side of the auditory cortex, and louder sounds at 90 decibels were processed on the ventromedial side. This is still being researched. The hair cells in the cochlea are very delicate. Sounds that have intensities that are too strong can produce vibrations that can permanently damage them. Thankfully, the body has a way of protecting hair cells from loud sounds. There are two muscles in the middle ear that can contribute to amplitude damping. The first is tensor tympani, controlled by cranial nerve 5. It runs along the middle ear and attaches to malleus. When it contracts, it stiffens the tympanic membrane to dampen the vibrations that are passed to the ossicles. The second muscle is stapedius, controlled by cranial nerve 7. It attaches directly to stapes and stiffens stapes when triggered, reducing the vibrations that are passed on to the cochlea. These two functions dampen sound vibrations and protect the hair cells in the cochlea. Hearing loss is a pretty big problem in the United States. More than 30 million adults have some form of hearing loss, and that's about 15% of the population. It's a bigger problem with the elderly, about half of those 70 plus and about 80% of those 85 and up have some form of hearing loss. Now, there's two kinds of hearing loss. The first is conductive, meaning that there's issues with the outer or the middle ear 
For example, a earwax blockage would be considered a conductive hearing loss. And the second is sensory neural. And that means that there's an issue with the cochlea, the inner ear, or some neural pathway from the cochlea up to the auditory cortex. Noise-induced hearing loss, which is what happens when you hear sounds that are too loud and damages the hair cells, that is a form of sensory neural hearing loss. When loud noises damage those hair cells in the cochlea, typically if the sounds aren't too loud or if they're in short duration, your hair cells can recover. However, if the sound intensity is too high, if it gets above 120 decibels, which is roughly the sound of the front row of a heavy metal concert, or if you have prolonged exposure, so lower levels of intensity but longer exposure, this temporary hearing loss can become permanent. And some symptoms of hearing loss include tinnitus, sound distortion, diplacusis, which means that you hear the same pitch, but it sounds different to you every time, um, hyperacusis, which is hypersensitivity to sound, and some upper register hearing loss. So I'm going to show you guys what that sounds like. Imagine you're listening to your favorite song. You hear it fully and clearly with your full range of hearing. Sounds enter from the base of the cochlea, so loud noises damage the hair cells at the base first. Those are the ones responsible for your high frequency hearing. When your upper register is gone, this is all that's left. This is the quality of your hearing for the rest of your life. So please, protect your ears. Upper frequency sounds are responsible for consonant noises. So differentiating between the sound of an F, f the sound of an S, S um, T's and K's, t, k, that's all above 5,000 hertz. So without your upper register, suddenly you have issues communicating with people. This affects your social engagement, your relationships, it decreases your quality of life, and it's associated with dementia, depressions, debility, delirium, dropping down, and death. Um, the six Ds. So clearly it's important to protect your ears. National foundations have developed regulatory safety limits on noise exposure. The European Union Directive set a safety limit of 85 decibels. You can see that on the diagram on the right here. So um, that's over the span of eight hours, I believe. The EPA set a noise exposure limit of 70 decibels continuously over a 24-hour period. At 70 decibels, in fact, even at 75 decibels, your ears are at less than a 1% risk of permanent damage. However, for those who um, work at the level of 85 decibels, 8% of the working populations working at that noise level are expected to have hearing loss over the span of 40 years. So the EU directive, their noise exposure standard, doesn't completely protect you. The research noise thresholds for noise safety are 75 decibels over a 24-hour period, 83 decibels over an eight-hour period, and then 92 decibels over a one-hour period. So if you're going to a concert and it's at 92 decibels or less, you're only there for an hour, you're safe. Don't worry about it. But if it's louder than that, if you're staying there for longer, please wear earplugs. 
protect your ears. Musicians are four times more likely to develop noise-induced hearing loss than the general public. And this is because musicians spend a lot of time right at the source of the noise. If you're in an orchestra, um, if you play in a loud metal band maybe, you spend a lot of time, hours practicing with loud noises that are often over 100 decibels. And this can have permanent consequences for your ears and your hair cells. So as an overview, loudness is a basic building block of sound that ranges from soft to loud, roughly low to high intensity. Increasing loudness can make music clearer, more energetic, more enjoyable, but too much, too loud, can cause permanent damage to hair cells in the cochlea, resulting in significant quality of life decreases. Many different factors go into how we perceive loudness. It's not just intensity. And it's important to keep in mind that we perceive sound and music with our brains and not just our ears. Thank you.